To be a scientist, you need to have a spirit of adventure because you are going to test things you don't know about. And for that, you need to be curious. In a moment, I'm going to tell you something my youngest son taught me about curiosity. But to do it, we need first to go to the University of Bologna in Italy and describe something I consider appalling. It is a tale of two rooms. The University of Bologna took shape in the 11th century and is one of the first universities ever founded. If you looked at how biology was studied back then, which was medicine, and compare it to how biology is studied now, you would laugh out loud. What I find appalling is what happens if you walk down the hall and enter our second room, which is a lecture hall. If you open the door, you wouldn't feel like you were in a museum in the 14th century. You would feel like you were at a modern university in the 21st. The lecture rooms designed centuries ago look just the same as those designed today. Minus perhaps a projector and maybe a microphone. Nothing has changed. What is the difference between these two rooms? Mostly, it's a point of view. In biology, we eventually decided to test things before we said we understood them. We got a spirit of adventure and trained a skeptical eye on anything we couldn't measure. Biology followed scientific rules. By and large, we have abdicated that perspective when it comes to information transfer between people, whether in universities or businesses. That's odd and it's appalling. If you are in education, you are in the business of brain development. If you are leading a modern corporation, especially in our increasingly technical world, you need to know how brains work. If we are ever going to change one room into the other, we will need to start testing things in a rational framework, which is exactly what these 12 rules are designed to provide. My two-year-old son Noah and I were walking down the street on our way to preschool when he suddenly noticed a shiny pebble embedded in the concrete. Stopping mid-stride, the little guy considered it for a second, found it thoroughly delightful, and let out a laugh. He spied a small plant an inch farther, a weed valiantly struggling through a crack in the asphalt. He touched it gently, then laughed again. Noah noticed beyond it a platoon of ants marching in single file, which he bent down to examine closely. They were carrying a dead bug, and Noah clapped his hands in wonder. There were dust particles, a rusted screw, a shiny spot of oil. Fifteen minutes had passed and we had only gone 20 feet. I tried to get him to move along. After all, I had to get him to school so he could learn. <laughs> Suddenly I stopped, watching my little teacher, wondering how long it had been since I had taken 15 minutes to walk 20 feet. The greatest brain rule of all is something I cannot prove or characterize, but I believe in with all my heart. As my son was trying to tell me, it is the importance of curiosity. For his sake, and for ours, I wish classrooms and businesses were designed with the brain in mind. Though we currently have no idea what that would look like, the little we do know suggests we need to start over. And if we started over, curiosity would be the most vital part of both demolition crew and reconstruction crew. As I hope to have related here, I am very much in favor of both. I will never forget the moment this little professor taught his daddy about what it meant to be a student. I was thankful and a little embarrassed. After 47 years, I was finally learning how to walk down the street.